So hey folks and welcome back to another video and on this video we're actually out on our first ride on the Triumph Bonneville the 2022 Gold Line Edition. Triumph have been very kind enough to drop this off with me. Now I have ridden a T100 before and done a, uh, a ride on one and I'll put a link in the top right hand corner to that but uh, I wanted to get hold of the, uh, the awesome looking Gold Line Edition. So uh, if you're interested in this bike, stick around, stay tuned, and uh, we'll be right back. So welcome back folks, and as you can see behind me, you've got the T100 Gold Line Edition. This is uh, the 2022 model, available only in 2022. So let's have a look at the, uh, the awesome paintwork on this bike, and also give you a quick overview of the specs on this thing. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you my new helmet that I bought for the uh, big tour in August. It's an Arai helmet and it's the Tour X4. So uh, stick around to the end if you're interested in that. I'll give you a quick look at that. So to give you an overview of it, um, basically you are paying an extra £600 for this beautiful paintwork. Don't know if the camera picks it up, it's glistening in the sun there, but you've got a uh, paint scheme which is a silver ice and the competition green on the top with the, uh, the goal line, hand painted tank and also hand painted side panels. So you pay £9,995 for this bike and the standard version or the standard uh, offerings are £9,395. Standard colours you can get in the uh, Lucerne Blue Fusion White or the Carnival Red Fusion White, or also you can get the Jet Black version. Okay, so what do you still get for that money? Uh, well, obviously you pay more for the paint scheme. I think it looks nice because they've actually done the, uh, the mud guards front and rear in that beautiful metallic flex silver ice. So you get a 900cc high torque parallel twin. This has got a 270 degree crank, which gives it that uh, nice burble as you go along. Uh, it comes at 64.1 brake horsepower and that's at 7,400 RPM and then you've got 80 Newton meters of torque and that's at 3,750 RPM. So the actual torque on this thing is really, really low down. Seat height, you've got 790 millimeters, so good for short riders too. And the weight of this bike is 228 kilograms. So the tank on the bike is 14.2 litres and with that you get 68.9 miles per gallon or 4.1 litres per 100 kilometres and the engine comes with a 5-speed gearbox on the T100 whereas the T120 is a 6-speed. To be honest you don't actually notice it and also I prefer this engine over the uh, 1200 engine. It does come with a 10,000 mile service interval or a 12 month whichever comes first. The forks on the bike are non-adjustable 41 millimeter and I noticed they haven't put gaiters on this bike so that's one thing I would add to this just to put the gaiters on just to keep that old school look. Obviously it's got a radiator and it's water cooled. So on the front of the bike you've got 310 millimeter disc single side on the left hand side and also a Brembo caliper there which is two pot. On the rear, you've got 255 millimeter disc, and this is on a two piston Nissan caliper. You've got exhaust both sides. You've also got these 32 spoke wheels. The spokes are chrome and the wheels are black. Obviously with the spokes being in the center, they're tubed tires. Now these come on Pirelli Phantom Sport comp tires with 100 on the front, and then you've got a 150 on the rear of the bike just there. It's got some nice foot pegs with rubber inserts in. No vibrations really on the bike through the bars or the foot pegs. One thing I do like on this version as well, you've got the nice chrome Triumph emblem on the side there and they've blacked out where the Triumph uh, actual logo and lettering is. Looks really nice. And that tank is just gorgeous. When I saw this bike in pictures, I was unsure until it arrived and got rolled off the van today. Really, really stunning paintwork. So if I was going to buy a T100, I would certainly get this one. This is the most classic looking bike in any modern day classic today. 
So headlight on the bike is a standard uh, bulb and you've got standard bulbs in the indicators but on the rear of the bike you also have an LED tail light and brake light but you've got standard bulb indicators on the rear. The seat is really comfy as you would expect from Triumph. The rear shocks, you've got twin shocks on the rear and these are preload only adjustable. So if you're carrying a passenger, you can easily adjust the rear suspension. The bike does have under seat USB charging. It comes with switchable traction control and also ABS. The bike is A2 compliant with a kit. This would make a really nice A2 compliant bike, really would. Okay, sitting on the bike, uh, the seating position is really comfortable. You've got these upright bars, lovely chrome handlebars, chrome mirrors. The view from the mirrors is really, really good. And also switch gear is very plain and simple. You've got nothing fancy on here. Okay, so the dials on this bike, you've got the beautiful twin chrome surround dials. And on here, you've got two LCD screens, one in the left and one in the right. With that, you get all kinds of information. You get a decent fuel gauge. You get the normal odometer, trip meters, one and two, miles per gallon, average miles per gallon, time and traction control. You can also turn this off. So very plain and simple, basic. You've got an information button on the left-hand side, lights, main beam and dipped, indicators, horn, start and stop, hazard warning lights. And that's about it. It's got adjustable clutch lever and adjustable brake lever on the front which is really really nice a lot of bikes don't come with adjustable clutch levers so that's great so what would I change about this bike well I would put the gaiters on as I've mentioned on the front and on the side panel just there I'm not a lover of that green and gold pinstriping with Bonneville written in white I would have preferred it if it was uh, just a silver side panel case so I would probably change that but the tank is absolutely gorgeous, as is the fenders and everything about this bike. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, down to the, the bracket on the mudguard there with the Triumph emblem. So how does she ride? Well, I'll, uh, I'll jump on her now and we'll head off, give you a little bit of an update on how she rolls. Now, this is how I look on the bike with my uh, flat-footed feet down, a little bit of curve in the leg and then feet on the uh, the pegs like so uh, the knee tucks into the uh, the tank where this tank pad is really nicely and grips so uh, yeah it's a really really comfy position comfy bike to ride So she sounds really, really nice from that 270 degree parallel twin. Suspension's really plush, not too soft, not too hard. The brakes, they're okay, um, but for something that weighs this much, I think a, uh, a twin disc on the front would be, uh, would be far better. But she pulls okay. Now one thing Triumph are very good at is the chassis and the handling of bikes. Even on the Bonneville range, they really handle, you can really muscle these bikes around. I only said to the wife today, you know, out of all of the colours of the T100s that I've had so far, I think I tested the, originally down at Triumph I tested the red and white. And then uh, last year I borrowed the blue and white, which I really loved. But this gold line with the racing green and that silver with the metallic fleck in it and then the pinstripe just down the tank is my favorite, it really is. Knocked it out of park again, Triumph. This would be the one that I would spend my own money on. So what's its bad points? Well. It's really hard to find anything a little bit bad with it. Uh, I wish they'd have put the six-speed gearbox in this. Do you need it? Not really. If you're on motorways for hours on end, 
touring, which I doubt you're going to be on this bike anyway, then you don't really need it. And if you do, then just buy the T120. A little bit more power for touring. And also the T120 has cruise control, which this doesn't. I believe you can get it as an accessory, but it doesn't come as standard. It's pretty basic. It's got uh, single mode, which is road, that's it. Whereas the T120 has road and rain. It really is a lovely bike. I love that they put the twin clocks on this and they haven't put the single clock on like the street twin. I think even the street twin and other models, even the uh, the Rocket 3, uh, would love twin clocks like this on something like that. Now all that torque is available at 3,700 RPM, so it doesn't matter what gear you're in, you just open the throttle and she pulls. It really is a nice feeling, it really is. One of my favourite engines in any twin. A beautiful summer's evening, absolutely gorgeous to be uh, taking this out for a run. The clutch, as you might expect from Triumph, is really, really nice. It's got a slip and assist clutch, so uh, the clutch is really light and uh, really easy to change gear. No need for any uh, quick shifters or blippers or anything like that on this bike. Plain and simple, nice light clutch and also I love that it's adjustable. The other negative that I find on this bike is that if you wanted to take the rear wheel off or loosen the rear axle nut to tighten your chain up or something like that then you've got to take the exhaust off on the right hand side to be able to get to it and get something into it to, uh, to do it. Not sure if you can get a spanner in there and, uh, and do it. have to be a, uh, an awfully big spanner. But on the positive side, uh, pretty much I like everything about the bike. It's very simple, very down to earth, and does what it says on the tin. Really does. It looks the part. How they've made, you know, the classic 60s Bonneville still look this good in today's era. I have no idea. Hats off to your Triumph. Great job. And also, there's so many accessories for these bikes, aftermarket accessories, to really make it your own Bonneville. Really is my favourite. Favourite so far? The T100 Gold Line Edition for 2022. I do hope they continue this range and this line and paint scheme for 2023 because I just might, might be purchasing one and I would like to buy the new one. But who knows, let's see what they come out with next year. I think the other niggle for me as well would be the tubeless tyres. Now for me, I pretty much use single bike for a lot of things. You know, you could use it for weekend touring, camping trips, you know, you name it, NC500, across Europe, wherever you want on this thing but uh, not being able to quickly repair a tyre at the side of the road would be slightly annoying. So I would probably have to then go to the expense of spending a lot more money on new wheels, spoked wheels that can hold tubeless tyres. So yeah, that would, be a, that would be a downside. I think with the latest technology and things these days, there's no need for tube tyres. The fact that it has bulb headlight and it's non-LED, I actually like. I think it's uh, it's just in keeping with that old style classic look, with it being a yellow, whereas if it was an LED, it would be uh, quite a high color temperature and be a little bit whiter. So I do like that. And I do like the fact that it does a lot of miles to the gallon, what with today's fuel prices. That's a real plus. Okay, so thanks for tuning in, folks. 
and if you're not subscribed to the channel then uh, hit that subscribe button ding that bell for future videos coming up and uh, also if you're not following us on instagram uh, check out our instagram page also thanks again and uh, take care we'll catch you on another video soon cheers guys okay so i said i'd give you a look at the helmet this is the arai tour x4 this is the adventure helmet and uh, i've just purchased this for my trip into europe in august uh, mainly to get some ventilation and also i'll be doing a uh, review on this helmet if you're interested in that look out for that in a couple of weeks and uh, i'll tell you all about it but uh, yeah there's more ventilation in this helmet than uh, my others with me going to hot countries i wanted something with a peak on it just to uh, block the sun a little bit I didn't know what size helmet to get and while I was at the TT I were there so I went in and I got properly fitted for this helmet. Yeah it really really fits well. One of the best fitting helmets and best quality helmets I've ever owned. Nothing against HJC which I currently use um, but this is far superior. Obviously the price point is higher um, but this is handmade. So stick around for that uh, review.